Hey, how's it going? So today we are talking about ingrown toenails. Thanks, guys. All right, so today is, I think this is Deku's last day. Isn't it right, Christine? I think next up is Sailor Moon, maybe. I don't know if she can draw Sailor Moon or not. We'll, we'll see. She's probably been working on it, knowing Christine. Anyway, ingrown toenails. So there are a lot of people that have ingrown toenails because everybody has toes. A lot of times this is genetic. Um, sometimes if you have a real beefy toenail, excuse me, a real beefy toe that grows around your toenail and you let it kind of stay tucked in underneath and around the edges with a lot of meat, you can end up with an ingrown toenail. Some of this is from an injury. Sometimes it just happens, freak accidents. Um, the interesting part about this, I will admit that I never learned about ingrown toenails in medical school or in surgery residency. We always cut off toes, but we never really talked about toenails. So this is kind of one of those things that I learned on the job. Um, the first gentleman that I worked with, he actually taught me how to take care of toenails. So this is actually pretty good information because it affects everybody and you know, it'll save you a trip from the podiatrist knowing what to do. So first things first, what is an ingrown toenail? Condition where the nail edge grows into the tissue of the nail. Probably 90% of the time, it's the big toe. Now, before we start talking about how to take care of it, you first gotta understand a little bit of the nail anatomy. So coarse nail plate, the lunula, the cuticle, which is the little white part that you always get trimmed back when you go to get a pedicure or, med or pedicure or manicure, probably a pedicure. Um, as far as from a side, of course, this is the bone. Um, nail bed and the nail matrix. Now, um, the bed of the nail, we, well, this is usually what we're prying up. Um, and we're trying to get this nail from growing in this edge on this side. But we'll get more to that about treatment. Now, as far as the causes, if you're cutting your toenail like this picture here where you've cut it back and there's a little bit of skin, you can imagine that you leave a little corner here. Sometimes that corner grows straight out. Sometimes that corner goes straight down, especially if it bends, because a nail by itself has this natural plane that's usually flat, but it'll curve down. So if you cut it too much short like this, it'll start digging down, and then that's when you start getting problems with ingrown toenails. Um, so we usually recommend that you let them hang out a little bit on the top. Not a lot. We don't want you to um, look like Manimal. I don't know if y'all remember Manimal. That was a TV show back in the 90s. But anyway, um, we don't want you to have eagle claws or whatever. It can also occur from an injury. So if you injure the nail bed um, or the nail plate, sometimes it'll grow funny. And when that happens, you can end up with an ingrown toenail. Um, bad shoes, steel toe shoes do it a lot. Um, again, if you have funny toes because your dad had funny toes or your mom had funny toes, you, they'll probably have ingrown toenails. You're probably going to have them as well. Um, and any infection around the nail will do it. Now, the other interesting part is about diabetic. Diabetics do get ingrown toenails, uh, but there's a little difference. They're, all, they're also um, a little higher risk for developing fungal infections of the toenails. That, in combination with not having a lot of pain to know that your toenail is growing into your toe, they usually present with a late type of infection. And a lot of times we end up having to cut toes off of diabetics because of ingrown toenails. So the one thing we tell all diabetics, check your feet. If you have a family member that's a diabetic, check their feet. Anytime your grandma's house and she's a diabetic, Look at her feet because a lot of times they'll step on tacks, having grown toenails, even have cat hair stuck underneath the nail and they don't know it and it can cause an infection. Now, as far as signs and symptoms, pain, swelling, warmth, redness, stiffness, pus, anytime you see this on a great toe, common things being common, you have an ingrown toenail you need to get it checked out. If you see a lot of redness or a lot of pus, especially if you're a diabetic, 
you need to consider getting treatment sooner rather than later, whether that's your podiatrist, whether that's a general surgeon, whether that is your primary doctor just to get antibiotics until you see somebody, that's always a good idea. Now, as far as treatment for this, there are some non-surgical options. Um, Epsom salt, every old person tells you soak everything in Epsom salt. In this situation, they are correct. If you soak this in Epsom salt, it not only softens up the skin, but it allows a nail bed to kind of go from this to this. And it also makes it so you can pry it up a little bit if you are adventurous and you can get that ingrown toenail out if it's early. Um, let me rephrase it, you can get it up. A lot of times you can't get it out. Once you get it up or out after you've soaked, you can then put stuff like cotton between the nail and the skin. That'll kind of help it stay tilted up so it'll stay out. Um, again, redness, pus, antibiotics, whether it's a pill or a cream, works putting bandages on it helps with the local infection. But again, doing all of this probably 50% of the time, you're gonna end up having to have surgery. I probably have taken out hundreds of toenails on my Instagram. I'm not gonna put one here, but go look at it. There's a whole series on toenail removal. Now, complete versus part. You'll see why I let Christine draw everything here in a second. So this is a toe, this is a toenail, okay? Now, a complete is truly a complete. We just take the whole nail, flip it off, and that's it. When we talk about partial, what we're talking about is a wedge resection. So a lot of times, let's say this is the border of the skin right here and it's a little inflamed. You can say it's on both sides, doesn't matter which one. What we will find when we're in the, when we're in the operating room or in the office, once we start lifting that up, you actually will have nail that comes out underneath this. So even though there's skin over it and it's inflamed, the nail can go pretty far. So that's why a lot of people have trouble removing these and fixing these on their own because they only see this little bit and it's a lot. Sometimes we'll have people come in that have been seen by their um, manicurist, pedicurist, and they've like only cut part of it. So what'll happen is they'll have this phenomenon where they still have skin here, but they have this little hook back here that's growing up underneath that skin still and causing problems, okay? so. When we talk about partial removal, what we do, and this may or may not show up that well, but we'll still draw it, is I do what's called a wedge resection. So you draw a straight line from the edge of the skin where it's abnormal back to this corner of normal nail. You then pry this up and pull that whole section out. So that way we don't um, completely remove the, t the nail, but it also gives it an opportunity to heal down the scar and grow straight out. But again, if you have those funky toes that makes it look like it's in a toe taco, I guess, you're still gonna have this same problem. Um, distal versus proximal, pretty much what they're talking about is you can see this one has a hook and this one has a whole thing. What you need to make sure that you do is there's still nail back here under the cuticle. So you actually have to go past it to get this ingrown part out. So you've got to get all of that in green out. Otherwise, if you leave this here, um, it'll grow back out underneath that skin. Sometimes you can get away with just trimming this off the side, especially if it's a small sliver. If it's a big sliver, it won't work, and you still end up with that little hook. Um, <clears throat> the last thing we talk about is chemical destruction of the nail is a little complex because what you don't want to do is leave um, a young person with no nail because it'll get stepped on in school, they're playing sports, it hurts. Um, if you are a person and you have another person that is attracted to your feet, you may want to have nine toes 
versus 10 toenails. You can put a fake nail on there. I know a young lady that has a real funky toe and we had to take her toenail off and she puts a, a little fake uh, veneer or what, it, what, it, what are they called? Um, hey, Sally, when they put a fake toenail on something, what's it called? Yeah, you know, like when we pull it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're called acrylic. Acrylic, my bad. Ladies, thank y'all. Um, if you put, <laughs> you can put an acrylic fake nail on there and nobody will know the difference. Um, but we don't really like killing those nails unless it's necessary. So usually we'll do it two or three times, maybe re remove the entire nail if the wedge doesn't work and see if it grows back naturally in a straight fashion. If it doesn't, then we've got to talk about killing it. Um, we used to use phenol. Phenol, they ran out of it, and then they were using something else, and that works pretty well. And then now we're back to phenol. Um, so we have substances that can kill the nail bed so the nail doesn't grow back. Even when you do that, it sometimes grows back. The most important thing with phenol when you're using it in the operating room or in your office is you pull the nail off, put phenol on it, wait about three or four seconds, and then you reverse it with alcohol. So you have to put alcohol right on it, otherwise it'll jack up the entire nail bed. You'll end up having exposed bone, and you end up cutting the toenail off, uh, cutting the toe off. So now, in my office, once we cut a toenail off, we wrap it with gauze and neosporin. So we put neosporin or bacitracin or something over it, some type of antibacterial petroleum-based ointment one so the dressing doesn't stick and two just to kind of help with treating any infection once that's done what i tell everybody in the office is pull it off 24 hours later now when i leave the room my nurse comes back in and says okay that's not technically true what you need to do is soak it the first 24 hours that makes it easier to get it off and then change it one more time and then go back to neosporin and band-aids so yeah i was taught to just tell everybody to take it off but apparently that doesn't work so we soak it before we remove it. That's okay in this situation um, because for whatever reason, your toenail doesn't kind of put down a lot of fibrinous exudate. So there's not a lot of tissue to debride. So doing it that way works fine. If this was a nasty wound, you, you wouldn't want to wet it before you pull that dressing off because you need to debride it. Post-operative care, change your dressing like we talked about, elevate an ice foot, decrease activity, avoid tight shoes, prefer flip-flops. This is the only time I ever recommend mandals. Otherwise, I'm not a mandal fan. Um, and if you have a lot of erythema, redness, pus, anything that's really bad or it just stinks, we traditionally recommend antibiotics. Sometimes we'll give PO antibiotics. Sometimes just topical will, will work fine. All right, guys, that is it for toenails. Um, pretty straightforward. Try and play with it if you can. If you can't get it out, come see us. We'll get it taken off. Either wedge it or remove the whole thing. Um, put Neosporin on it and a Band-Aid or bandage uh, until it heals. And this is Deku's last dance on ingrown toenails. Like I said, as always, call me, DM me, whatever, Instagram. Got any topics or questions, we'll get them taken care of. All right, guys, take care. Side okay. Always start with the wedge okay, good question. So I always start with the wedge resection. Um, what he's asking is um, somebody comes in with an ingrown toenail, do you just take the whole thing off and keep it rolling, or do you start with the wedge? Is it a stepwise kind of resection? I would say I start with a stepwise. Unless it's um, got real bad fungal infection, oncomycosis, then I actually just take the whole thing off, tell them to put um, athlete's cream on it to kind of help with any infection but if it is truly just a simple ingrown toenail i wedge it first and if it's a little kid i might wedge it the second time before i go to removing um, the toenail the other interesting thing about the wedge is that most kids either have them on the outside of both toenails or the inside of toenails i've only seen one student that had an ingrown toenail on the outside on one and on the inside on the other and that was actually from trauma um, but commonly we just start with a wedge resection does that answer your question yes cool you got any emma mm -hmm. all right that's it <laughs> <Pardon>. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with thunder with the rain <laughs>